Welcome to the Agile Wire, where professional scrum trainers Jeff Bubbles and Jeff Molesky discuss agile topics. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Bubbles and Jeff Molesky. And we are recording. All right, Mr. Bubbles, kick us off, man. All right, so this week we've got uh, John Kern on the podcast with us. So John is the, one of the co-authors of the Agile Manifesto and really just a product developer. Um, and I'm sure he's going to share a lot of stories with us about, you know, over the last 20 years and what's happened in Agile in his mind from the day that they signed it to, to where we are today. So, John, starting with that, I know you've told this story a lot. and I mean, it's been 20 years since, you know, the Agile Manifesto signing. But um, what's like one thing or, or something that maybe has been, you know, exaggerated or changed, or maybe our listeners wouldn't know um, about the Agile Manifesto signing. Maybe it's been enhanced by, you know, stories over 20 years, because, you know, your mind changes a little bit as that happens. Um, anything you want to, sh- anything you can share with us there that might be unique? Well, I guess I'd like to sort of point out that nobody really th- thought anything like this would happen. You know, I, I don't want to say that goes without saying, but it kind of should go without saying that the, the fact that we touched millions and millions of people's lives, you know, was certainly not anticipated. And I think the one of the most, I don't want to say unsung, but one of the most powerful aspects to me is nobody actually remembers everything. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, I think it's a testament to the phrase I, I like to use is we, we left our egos at the door. And there were a lot of big egos in the room. There were a lot of famous people in the room. I, I was not one of them, but, um, but I was very vocal in the room. But that, to me, gives you a sense of the, of the almost miraculous, I don't know, 48 hours of egoless, support of each other and and i'm just really happy to say that nobody actually knows what really happened and why and who so that that's a pretty powerful statement mm-hmm. so kind of like that first line manager manifesto it kind of just emerged from doing it right like you didn't go really set True. out to like do this thing it just emerged right uh, when you all got together so that's that's pretty cool um so one story I've heard, uh, and it could have been one a version of the truth, and I, I guess I'd love to validate it with, with you, is that when you were thinking of words for agile, like the three words they were thinking you were thinking of were agile, responsive, and adaptive. Is that is that a true story, or was there something something else that you guys were considering? Because the word agile, I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't like we're going to call this thing agile and we're going to get together, right? No, actually the uh, and you can find some of the, I think maybe on my Flickr feed and maybe on a, uh, Agile Uprising. I, I think I there's some, you can find various photographs and, and my notes, handwritten notes. But Alistair originally booked the, the conference room under the guise of lightweight methodology or something like that. <clears throat> so we were combating at the time heavyweight method. So, of course, we're the lightweight yep. Until Alistair, I, I credit him with saying something funny like, yeah, you know what? I, I, nobody wants to be called a lightweight anyway. Yeah. So that's a dumb name. So we need to come up with something else. Yeah. And, and this is another case where I don't know if anybody necessarily knows where Agile came from. Because my memory might be fuzzy. I, I, you know, I could say... All I know is at that time, I was doing agile fighter research and enhanced fighter maneuverability, talking about fighter agility, the X-31 aircraft, um, post-stall maneuvers, crazy stuff. And certainly, if somebody else had said the word, I would have jumped on it because it was a fascinating topic for me. I used to you know, admire the barn swallows around our barn about how agile they were compared to large birds because they could immediately change their plan form. They could fold their wings back, fold their tail back and go super fast or splay them out and make a really hard high G turn. And that's agile. And um, so I think that's another unknown, <laughs> like mm-hmm. uh, at least to me, I've never heard any of the co-authors recollect 
like who came up with that i remember martin fowler saying how do you say it because english versus american <laughs> you know it's it's a debate uh but yeah so that's a great you know the i don't know about the other the, the other ones might have been there adaptive although we might have said well yeah but that's you know that's the name of a process i don't I forget high smiths or, mm -hmm. or Al alistair's but yeah so, yeah so i don't really remember but that's my yeah that's my story that that's the version I, I've heard is like, oh, we can't name an adaptive because that's, you know, Jim's like he's got kind of that trademarked. So we're not going to pick that one, even though mm -hmm. that might, might work, you know. Yeah, I think cool. the name actually was awesome. Yeah, because it, it, it says well. it all, you yeah. know, like for my work doing DOD stuff, you know, large heavyweight processors or anything but agile, it, you know, it was hard to move the ship you know, hard to change direction. And so to me, agile was perfect because it tries to give the connotation of being able to be nimble and move and, 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 you know, adapt to circumstances and change direction quickly. And, um, you know, small fighter plane or a small mm -hmm. ship versus a big aircraft carrier. Thank you for listening to the agile wire. We are consistently inspecting and adapting ourselves. We would appreciate feedback at feedback at the agilewire.com or on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play Store. See you next time.